In Zapier, you're constantly working on all these different platforms and with all these different tools. And therefore, sometimes it can be necessary to actually format data uh, and to change the way it, uh, it works, the way it looks. And this is why Zapier has introduced the Zapier formatter a long time ago, uh, which allows you to format all kinds of data. And I'm going to show you how to use this in this video. Now, this is going to be a rather long video, but I uh, really advise you to watch it till the end because this is one of the most important tools in Zapier. Uh, it's one that I constantly use uh, in pretty much all of my Zaps because it just has so much functionality built into it. Um, so I uh, would highly suggest that you actually watch it till the end. But now without further ado, let's get right into the video. This video is part of my Zapier 101 course, which is available on Udemy, Skillshare and my own Teachable platform. And in the course, you will learn everything that you need to know about Zapier starting from complete scratch. So building out your first automations um, to more complex workflows and built in apps uh, to really advanced workflows and automations that will save you hours in your business every week, every month, and uh, will just make your life easier and your business more optimized. The course was specifically designed for beginners. So if you're just starting out with Zapier, uh, then this is the right course for you. It's also only around 10 to $15 depending on where you buy it. Um, and if you sign up through my link for Skillshare in the, in the description down below, uh, you will even be able to access it for free for the first 14 days. So if that sounds interesting to you, then you can check it out through the links in the description down below. And I hope I'll see you in the course. So the Zapier formatter step can be used uh, to work with different types of data. Um, I've listed them out right here. They are text, numbers, utilities, and the date and time um, properties. The most common one of the four different types of data is the text data. And so this is what we'll cover first. Now, if you want to work with data using the formatter, you have to add the formatter step uh, to your Zap. So in the choose app and event uh, box, choose the actual app. So just go to the side right here and click on format. And then in the action event, you choose text to, um, yeah, to work with text data. Now, what we're going to do in this case is we will actually create a trigger uh, that triggers where for uh, messages in our Discord channel. Uh, and we'll just take a single message and then uh, we'll do some kind of, uh, yeah, we'll do some transformations. We'll format it using the text step um, so that you see what we can do with it. So to start off, let's just click continue. And then we are here and we can actually set up the action. Now there are lots and lots of different uh, things that you can do with the text and we can take a look at them right here. So these are all the options that you have uh, and we'll go over some of the most important ones. So first of all, um, we could do something like, um, we could actually uppercase the entire text. Um, so click on the uppercase transform. And then just for the input, just choose the text that you want to input into uh, this um, yeah, tr transform step. In our case, this is a Discord message. So I just set up a trigger that just pulls in messages from a Discord and I'm going to use this for this step. So I'll click on the content and now this will just pull in the uh, actual um, yeah the actual message from Slack. So if I click on continue, then we can go on to test if this is working. So we'll click on test and continue. And we'll see that now the output is uh, the entire text all in uppercase. So this is what we wanted and it does work uh, as we see right here. Uh, now we can always do this with other properties as well. So we could also do uh, lowercase uh, works just the same way. I'll just demonstrate it to you. So we'll just continue uh, and test this again. And now you see it's all in lowercase. So the first, uh, this was in uppercase and now it's lowercase. You see how this works. I don't have to go through all of the options here, uh, but there are a, a couple of different more of these options. I think you can also, uh, yeah, you can also uh, like title case it and so on. So there are different uh, things that you can do uh, when it comes to just uh, changing how the text actually looks. Another set of transform values that we have is the ability to um, filter out certain pieces of data uh, from the text. So in our case, the content here uh, actually contains a link to an article. And what we can do using the, the, the formatted step is we can actually say we want to like pull out that URL to use somewhere else, for example. So we can go down uh, and we can click on extract URL like this. And then if you continue, and then when once it loads, just test and continue. 
we'll actually see that it now just outputs this URL. And that's something that we could now use in an additional step for something else so that we only have the URL. Maybe we want to add it to a link field or maybe we want to add it somewhere special. Maybe we have like a list of all these links from of articles and so on. So there's lots and lots of things you can do with this. Uh, and it not only works for URLs, but you can also do the same thing using the uh, extract email address option right here. You can also in extract a number. So we'll just take the first number that it finds. Uh, you can extract phone numbers, extract a certain pattern and so on. So there are uh, different ways you can extract data from, from this content. This could be really helpful if you are getting emails and you, for example, you want to save these emails or like the, the email addresses that you get into your contact list and so you could like just like let's say zap your like parse the content of your email and then save that email address or the phone number uh, to your Google contacts, for example, automatically. This is something where this might be really useful. Keep in mind that that only works for the first match though. So uh, if you have two URLs, for example, in your text, uh, then it will only get the first one. Um, so you have to be careful not to, uh, yeah, to let it like parse out information where you maybe you wanted to have both uh, the URLs saved. Um, because it only gets the first one. One of the other options that I use on a regular basis is uh, one that we actually also covered earlier as well when we uh, created this social media zap. So uh, where we wanted to truncate the text uh, so that it actually fits Twitter's format of having only 280 characters. So there we actually use the formatter step and uh, we use the truncate uh, transform option in order to uh, make the Facebook message much smaller so that it actually fits inside of the tweet. And that's it for some of the uh, like easier ones and some of the ones that you probably use the most often. Now let me quickly go through some of the options uh, which we'll just not uh, cover in too much detail uh, but uh, that are also um, maybe quite important and it's uh, really useful to know that they are available to you if you ever need them. So one thing is um, you can also like get the length or the word count of something that you're doing. So this could be really useful if you, for example, maybe you're a student or like a teacher that um, uh, is collecting essays from his students and you need them to be a certain uh, length in, in words. So you could have the students actually submit the, um, the entire text uh, to a form and then let Zapier actually automatically check if it has uh, it matches the word count uh, that you specified. So you could check if it has uh, as many words as you need it to have. And if it doesn't, then you could like send them an email back automatically that says, uh, well, your word count isn't uh, high enough. Please uh, add some content to your um, to your essay. It's something like this uh, is where you might want to use, use the um, word count option. You can also pluralize words, so you could um, like return the plural of a word, um, which I don't know, I usually don't use, but um, sometimes you might find this useful. And also one more thing that's more advanced, but it also is uh, quite um, nice is the option to replace things inside of the text. Um, so you can replace certain phrases or words uh, with other phrases or words if you ever need to do that. So for example, where this might be useful is if you have an email template that you want uh, Zapier to send out automatically, um, you could like take the email template and you could have like placeholders in there for the name. And then you could say based on the name that you know of the person, for example, um, to fill out those placeholders uh, with the uh, actual name of the person. So you could replace that using Zapier and then you wouldn't have to manually fill out your email template each time. The next data type that you can actually work with in the Zapier formatter is uh, the number date type. And this is also something that can be really, really useful. Um, you can perform calculations, you can convert currencies um, and much more. So let me show you some of the options you have here. Again, you want to add a formatter step to your Zap and you want in this time to choose the uh, numbers action event. Um, and then just click on continue and then we can choose how we actually want to use uh, this formatting step. So there are different options here as well. The like most most important ones are uh, performing math operations, in my opinion. Sometimes uh, formatting phone numbers, depending on what you're doing and what apps you're using, this might be uh, really, really useful. So formatting them uh, based on different um, yeah, country codes and so on. Um, just generally formatting your numbers 
And um, yeah, sometimes if you want to, you can also use these spreadsheet style formulas. If you're using Excel or Google Sheets, then you um, you are probably familiar with them. Um, then there's a whole list of these inside of um, uh, Zapier that you can use, uh, which allow you to have a lot of powerful features. So what we're actually doing in this example is we're taking in orders from a type form that I've set up, and then we want to uh, convert uh, the currency of uh, the product that we're selling in type form into our local currency. So we want to know how much money we actually made uh, based on the current exchange rate uh, of uh, the currencies. Um, so for this, we have a, an action step, or actually two action step that, steps that format the numbers and the text and then one that actually converts the currency and the last one sends this all to uh, our Slack channel uh, as a message. Uh, so let me go through this in a bit more of uh, detail. First of all, I want to show you the type form so that you know what we're actually getting from the form. And it's pretty much just uh, this one screen. So uh, we're saying like, you know, you can choose between these different products. The first one costs $49, uh, then the second one costs $99 and the premium version costs um, $199 and so the person that's actually filling out this form uh, can choose one of these products and then based on the product we actually want to calculate uh, how much money we made I think it's in, in euros but I, I'm not quite sure now the first step obviously is to uh, trigger the zap based on new entries in the type form the second step then is to actually extract a pattern um, that's what we're doing here. So we're using uh, this regular expression right here. Uh, and what this is doing, uh, you don't have to know what, what that is, but uh, what we're actually doing is we're extracting uh, the um, amount of money that we're actually uh, paying or the amount of money that's actually being uh, paid and what product has been sold. And um, if, you, if you see, this actually outputs uh, $49. So now we know how much we actually are earning with this new customer. Uh, again, don't worry if you don't understand what that is. Uh, it's it, you don't have to know that. I don't know how to use it either. <laughs> you could, I just uh, uh, use the regular expressions from other people um, because nobody knows how to use regular expressions. All right. So now the next step is actually to use a tool called Malaby. Um, it's actually a free tool. I didn't even know it before I like um, planned this uh, the, this Zap for the tutorial. But this is a really handy tool that allows you to. Uh, integrated with Zapier and that allows you to do live currency um, like exchange change rates and uh, see what cur currencies are worth in real time. So what we're doing here is uh, we have the uh, price in US dollars. So that's the one that we're taking in from the form. And we actually want to convert that to euros. And the amount that we want to convert, uh, that's the output that we're getting from the step where we're extracting uh, the price from the um, you know, the product, uh, the entire product thing. And then we, it just uses the normal date, so the date that currently is there when the zap is being triggered. And um, as the output, if you see, look at this right here, we see that this is the amount that we're exchanging. And this is then the converted amount that actually uh, we would get in euros. So now we've actually like converted the amount into euros. And now we are, uh, will lastly be uh, using another step, uh, this time a number step. Uh, so working with numbers in the formatter. And what we want to do is we just take in the converted uh, amount, which we get from the uh, Malaby currency converter. And we want to uh, turn it into a uh, into euro. So we're just turning this, um, with, which doesn't have any currency assigned to it, we're turning that into euros and then it actually gets output like this. So now we have uh, the amount with the euro sign in front of it and um, we now, now know what the exchange rate is. Now, as, as the last kind of action, uh, we're sending the entire thing to our Discord uh, channel. So we're just saying uh, this is a new product sale and the product is this one. And then we have this revenue adjusted for exchange rate um, um, line right here, which then shows us the, uh, the actual amount of money that we made uh, adjusted for the current exchange rate. So let's see how this actually looks if we um, send the message to Discord again. So we're just going to retest this action. And now inside of Discord, we actually see uh, that we got this new sale. As you see, the uh, new sale product starter for $49. Uh, the revenue adjusted for exchange rate is 41.11. I think that's not the current exchange rate because that's the test data from like 
a couple of weeks ago, but you, you get what I'm trying to do here. Now we're going to look at one more example using the number formatter step in Zapier. And uh, here it is, it's just a simple uh, Zapier automation that uh, runs a weekly report in Google Analytics and sends us the data uh, to our Discord channel as always. And in this case, what we're doing is, yeah, we just have a really simple Google Analytics report um, so if you click on this, we'll see we just want to get um, some metrics from our Google Analytics account. Uh, we're going to get the users and we're going to get the new users um, within the time frame of the last week. Um, so don't worry about what we're doing up here. It doesn't really matter at all. Um, it's just the fact that we have uh, the user data. So we just get the users and we get the new users. But there is no default way to get the returning users. So pretty much the uh, users minus the new users. And that's why we actually are trying to do this using the formatter step. And we're just doing, going to do a really simple calculation uh, that then spits out the um, amount of returning users on our website. Um, in this case, the data is pretty simple. So we just have 10 users and nine new users, uh, which means that there's, there must be only one person uh, that is a returning user. So it's a really simple calculation, but just, uh, you know, just think that it's a bit more complicated and then we could still use this example and still could use Zapier to perform the calculation. Um, so what we're doing is, again, really simple. Uh, in the numbers action, we're just using the transform of performing a math operation. And then the operation that we want to perform is just a subtraction. We're just subtracting the um, new users from the, uh, from the total users. And um, then what we're getting out is just one. And then this one person is the one returning subscriber or the one uh, returning visitor to our website. And then we can send that data to, to Discord uh, in order to uh, yeah just have that message. So I can uh, like re resend this again so that we actually see how this looks. But then we have like this, you know, like Google report um, right here. And we see website statistics. We have the total users, we have the new users and then we have this one returning user uh, because we actually like inputted that data right here in the action. Um, you see I inputted or like I'm, I'm printing out the data that we're getting from this um, number formatting step, which just gets us this single returning user. So lots to take in here and um, we're not even done yet. There's more to the Zapier formatter, but again, it's really important. So uh, I hope that you um, stay with me and um, yeah, you, you watch this uh, till the end and uh, there's also a second part coming up which uh, in which we're going to talk about the two other data types that you can work with, uh, one being utilities and one being the date types. So yeah, uh, stick with me and um, I hope I'll see you in the next one. Again, this video is part of my Zapier 101 course which is available on Udemy, Skillshare and my own Teachable platform. And in the course we go through everything that you need to know, starting from complete scratch uh, all the way to more advanced workflows. And this will actually help you save countless hours in your business uh, on tedious work and tedious tasks that can be easily automated through Zapier. Uh, the course was specifically designed for beginners, as I said, and it's only around 10 to $15. Um, so if you thought about starting to learn more about Zapier, uh, then this is the right tool for you, the right course for you, um, and I hope I'll see you there. The links to all these courses are in the description down below, and if you sign up for my Skillshare course, uh, then you will even be able to access it for 14 days for free um, through my link in the description. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.